Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, J.C. Soto. And today we have the uh, Intimacy Incubator. He's a coach, speaker, and author. His name is Kirk Samuels. And I met him a few weeks back, and we were talking about a serious, really serious subject that a lot of us unfortunately go through, which is divorce. He has a different method, a different approach to it that makes it more peaceful and for couples to make it through this traumatic experience. Welcome to the show, Kirk. Thanks, my man. Uh, it's, it's, you know, anytime I can spend some time with JC, I'm good, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, Tell us a little more about what is it that you do and how you're helping your clients with this. Uh, uh, this is something that seems like, uh, I believe, 50% of the couples in the U.S. go through this in a lifetime. Can you tell us more about how you're helping your clients going through that yeah, type of experience? Yeah, absolutely, my man. I um, So I took on the moniker, the Intimacy Incubator, because, uh, man, I've been, I've been working with uh, individuals, mostly men, but also uh, couples as well. Um, uh, primarily in the area of, of addiction. My personal mission statement is to co-create a world of intimacy and unconditional connection by teaching and inspiring 1 million men how to live free from internet pornography. And so, you know, it, it, most people, it's not a big surprise these days that, uh, that our divorce rate, uh, you know, the divorce rate is, is fairly high depending on, you know, whether it's first, second or third divorce. Uh, generically speaking, you know, the assumption is that, you know, or, or at least what people say is that half of uh, half of marriages end in divorce. And like I said, that's kind of a, a, a rough guesstimate. Uh, but if half of marriages end in divorce, let put that in perspective. Every year in America, there are roughly 900,000 divorces every year in America. That's a divorce pretty much every 30 to 40 seconds. And that number equates to 2,400 a day, seven days a week. And, you know, courts aren't open on Saturday or Sunday. So, you know, you can do the math on that one. But, but that's, you know, in, in terms of the, the impact or significance, that's the quantity of divorces that are happening these days. Now, the reason why, uh, <clears throat> the reason why, why my niche kind of fills a, 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 a void in that space is because, um, out of all of those divorces, six out of 10 involve someone with a porn problem. That that six out of 10 equates to out of that 2,400, that would be 1,500 a day, seven days a week. And that 1,500 a day not only involves the two people, but involves the kids and involves family, community, uh, any organizations or somebody, you know, if that couple's involved in a church or something like that. But there's a greater impact in that. And so it's a ripple effect. And, and so I end up working with a lot. Of, I mean, and I have my own divorce story twice over. I mean, so I'm a subject matter expert in a not so great way. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Um, but uh, so I end up working with uh, I have out of my own story, um, out of my own addiction story, I, I developed a, a method by which I teach men primarily um, how to get and live and stay free from pornography. Um, and uh, and like I said, because of the ripple effect, you know, when when a man is hurting or, or when a man is trapped or, you know, the state of the man, um, especially in a relationship or, or in a marriage, the first person that's impacted is the woman in his life. Um, you know, women pay the first price for masculine poverty, I like to say. Um, and so it ends up being, like I said, a ripple effect in the in the family, in the home. Um, and so ideally, you know, if I can help, if I can help a guy, I end up helping the couple. And if I can help a couple, I can end up helping, you know, kids. And if I can help kids, I end up helping families and generations and communities and all those kinds of things. So, so, you know, so uh, again, my, my story comes or my, my purpose and mission comes out of my story. Uh, but the impacts and the, and the ripple effects from that, um, you know, kind of go, you know, continually oh, out from that whole thing. So, um, so that's kind of, that's the space I feel. And, and I end up, I end up being hands-on um, in the ugly parts of life and the ugly parts of relationship. And I end up seeing a lot of people in, in hurting places and, and talking with uh, a lot of uh, men and, and women. My, my book is actually targeted to women. 
Um, and my book explains what it's like being the guy that's that's hooked on on pornography. I, I personify pornography and I make it a woman. Um, and I say what she does that no one else can do. Um, so, so in your experience, is this a, a more of a male problem than a female problem? Oh, by, by far. Yeah. Statistically speaking, um, as far as consumers, uh, three quarters of, I mean, you know, roughly speaking, three quarters of porn consumers are male and, and, in you know, and the other, and the rest are, are female. So it's primarily a male issue in terms of, um, in terms of consumption. And, um, and so that's how I end up working with the guys in terms of getting free. But I also end up working with, with women and wives in terms of the reconciliation, hopefully, um, and more specifically, the, the understanding. And, and the, the connection with all of the connection with this and divorce is that, and particularly in the, in the topic today, when you, when, you know, marriages don't end normally under good circumstances, <laughs> um, and when there's a lot of hurt and pain and, you know, when when a man um, is addicted to pornography, quite often the wife can be diagnosed with PTSD. And so, you know, so you carry all of that into the dissolution of a marriage. There's going to be some baggage. There's going to be some hurt feelings. There's going to be some some deep wounds and, and trauma and all those kinds of things. And so, you know, that that leads into how the couple gets divorced if, you know, if and when they do. Wow. Now, you know, the purpose of, of me wanting to talk to you is because I know this affects divorce. Uh, divorce affects businesses, but affects more than that. It just affects the whole life of, like you said, everybody else involved. Now, mm -hmm. how the uh, the kids usually respond to this kind of uh, experience when the uh, dad is the one addicted to this Internet porn? Yeah. Um, you know, when kids get uh, when divorce happens. Really, you know, the only ones, the only people that win in a divorce are the lawyers. Um, and when I say win, I mean, come out, generally speaking, better than 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 going in. And 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 that's because, you know, they at least when it's all said and done, you know, they got paid for for the transaction. Who who the 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 ones that pay the greatest price or the greatest sacrifice of the divorce are kids. Because kids are kind of like the innocent, you know, they're the innocent bystanders of all this. They didn't choose this. You know, they didn't have anything to do with this. And it actually creates kind of a, you know, uh, um, a generational or even a, 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 a psychological thing within kids in terms of, you know, when, when all of a sudden, you know, mommy and daddy aren't living together anymore. And now I got mommy's house and daddy's house. And, and maybe I, I spend some time there and some time there and, and kids begin to process, well, what did we do? And, you know, what was our fault? And, And, you know, kids get impacted significantly just by divorce, period. Now, when you throw in, you know, when you throw in something like 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 addiction in, into the equation, especially if that is the if that is the crux to the you know underlying reason of the divorce, you know, then they get to see they get to see the, the, the train wreck. They get to see, um, you know, how it all just fell apart. They get to see, first of all, mom and dad living completely separate lives, mom and dad not having any intimacy at all, you know, no connection, no, none of that. You know, they get to see mom crying. They get to see, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then the marriage is over and then the family is over. And then all of a sudden their, their fairy tale, all of their stability is gone. So the kids pay the greatest sacrifice. And, and like I said, you know, um, the unfortunate part about, divorces that involve addiction and particularly pornography addiction is that there's so much um there's so much deep wounds and deep scars involved in the in the in the whole thing that um that i mean it, it just presents in a very 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 ugly way in terms of how it all falls apart and it, it's pretty it's pretty sad pretty sad and what are some of the uh reasons for some of this man to resort to online porn Well, I mean, <laughs> most of what manifests in a man's life comes through the boy that's inside of him. You know, we all have a, a boy inside of us. And for a lot of us, you know, that boy was wounded when he was young in some kind of a way. I, you know, I like to say that most men have one of four wounds and, and particularly father wounds. E either the father was absent from the home. The father was absent in the home. The father was abusive. Or the father set such a high bar that the son can never make him happy. 
And so a lot of a lot of boys grew up with that kind of a wound. And then at some point, you know, wounds hurt and and pain gets medicated. And, and at some point, a guy gets introduced to something that medicates that loneliness or that empty space within him. And, and it just becomes something that, you know, that that he gets introduced to somewhere between the ages of like eight and 11 commonly eight or eight to 12. And then, and then he just grows around that. I mean, everything about him, his emotional makeup, his intimacy makeup, his sexual makeup, his identity just grows around that. And it's, it's very easy to look at a guy and say, you should just stop. But if it was that easy, you know, he would do it already. I mean, we don't look at any other type of addict and say, you should just stop. We have sympathy for the alcoholic. We have sympathy for the drug addict. And, you know, and, and and yet at the same time, this guy gets the the shame and the guilt helps to kind of keep it, you know, in the shadows and keep it suppressed and and, and keep it hidden. So, so that, that's kind of how guys, you know, that's kind of how guys get stuck in that pattern and that loop. Um, And quite often when they meet who becomes their wife, they have already been in a relationship with pornography for most of their life at that point. So the wife is actually coming into that relationship. It's not pornography coming into the marriage relationship. So when they come to see you, what kind of misconceptions do they bring with them? Either male or female. Yeah, well, men. <laughs> oh, man. You know, guys, you know, when, when, when have guys ever been accused of getting anything right uh, right away? Um, quite often, you know, guys, they see – quite often guys kind of see it from a linear perspective of I'm doing this so that I don't cheat on my wife. And what they don't understand is that their wife sees it as cheating on them. And that's why, and that's why the wife can be diagnosed with PTSD. And so they, they don't see it as infidelity, but she does. And so, you know, the way I relate it to guys is, um, and I, I'll, I'll keep this fairly clean. Um, but I said, you know, for you to say, well, I only look at porn, you know, once a week or a couple of times, a few times a month. I say, well, what if your wife came to you and said, you know what, once a week, a couple few times a month, I'm going to go get me a, a hotel room downtown and I'm going to meet up with this guy. And we're not going to have full sex, but maybe, you know, maybe we'll just do X, Y and Z. How, you know, and, and try to relate it to, the, to, to guys in that kind of way. And. And uh, and so that's a huge misconception from the the, the, the man side as, as far as the impact to to the wife. The huge misperception um, from the wife side is that it's just something he should just be able to stop and that he is bringing pornography into their marriage and into their relationship. Um, when, like I just said, in reality, when she met him in probably high 90s percent of the case, if not flat out 100 percent, when she met him, he was already in a relationship with pornography. She just came in and, and she's actually competing with pornography for his heart. But pornography already had his heart before her. So it's not just as easy as, well, he should just be able to stop. And why is he doing this to me and to us? It's I wish it was that easy, but it's not. It's not. It will take it will take a whole process to uh, to win him out of that. Right. Away from from the habit. Yeah. Now it's possible. I mean, I did it and I teach other people how to do it. It's possible to, it's possible to get free. I wouldn't be here on this podcast uh, otherwise. I mean, so it's as much as it's possible, it's not easy, uh, but it's, it's absolutely possible. And that's, I, that's why I teach my class the way I do in terms of, it's not a small group where we sit around telling sad stories. I teach guys the how the method, the methodology, the steps, how, because you know, man, the ramifications are huge. And, and I tell guys, guess what, man? Six out of 10 divorces involve pornography. So if you don't get free of this, you can expect uh, to be broke and to see your kids a whole lot less. And on top of that, you can expect one day to see your, on social media, your ex-wife and kids on vacation with another guy. Somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another dude, you know, I mean, you're going to see that on Facebook and, you know, and it's going to make you really, really mad because you, you might be funding part of that vacation, by the way. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so when they come in, they're also afraid, right? What kind of fears do you bring in with them? Guys? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, freedom is scary. You know, freedom is freedom is something that, and it's, it, again, you're, if when, when I'm interacting with a guy, uh, I recognize, because I've been there, 
that the whole idea of living without pornography can be scary to a guy because he's developed almost every part of who he is around pornography. A porn consumer spends a whole lot of time sitting because he's sitting at a computer, he's sitting down looking at a phone. And so his body, his physiology is formed around that. Like I said, his sexuality in terms of his preferences and, you know, and, and, and the things that he likes and the things that he doesn't like, his emotional state, you know, his intimacy. I mean, the, he lives in a 2D world in, in terms of pornography, but he lives in a 3D world outside of that. So quite often, you know, that third dimension that's missing in his life is depth. He probably doesn't have any depth in his life of rich relationships and rich, deep guy friends and intimacy and somebody that he can call and cry with and all those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, and, and so, you know, from that perspective, you know, I recognize that the guy, you know, the idea of living without pornography can be scary. Like, how do I live without that? This is all, you know, I've had this in my life since I was nine. How do I live without that now? And so it's, you know, I understand it's a, it's a huge ask for a guy to even consider living without porn. It ain't, it ain't that easy. It's the only free and unlimited drug ever. I mean, no other drug is free and unlimited now or in any point in history because every single one of us has one of these. And, and, and nowadays pornography is free. Anything, it's anything you want, it's out there. And so, you know, if, if, if Jack Daniels was free and unlimited, would we have a problem? Oh, yes. yes. I mean, if food was free and unlimited, would we have a problem? If cigarettes were free and unlimited, would we have a problem? Absolutely. So right now, it's the only ever in history free and unlimited drug. Um, and so that, that's why we have the problem. And again, the connection to all of that, I keep coming back to this, the connection to all of that is that six out of 10 of those divorces involve somebody with a porn problem. So if there's a porn problem in a relationship, there's going to be intimacy problems. There's going to be money problems. There's going to be communication problems. There's going to be all kinds of stuff because um, there's, there's no connection. There's no relationship. There's no intimacy with that there. So do you help guys also after, you know, when they come to the point of getting divorced and they are separated and they're done through the process, you help them through all that also? Yeah. And so here's an important thing that I tell guys a lot. First of all, you can't want to get free for her, for your wife. You got to want to get free for you. Um, because, it, it, and so I've been divorced twice, right? My second divorce happened after I got free from porn. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, I was medicating a whole lot of things. And part of what I was medicating was a dysfunctional marriage. And so when I wasn't medicating anymore and had to confront that and deal with that, then that's when a whole lot of things fell apart. So it's vital for a guy to want it for himself because his, I say his marriage is not the most important relationship in his life. And it's politically incorrect to say, but his marriage is not the most important relationship in his wife. First of all, if he has any kind of faith background in his life, that's way more important. But but and, and then after that, the report, the, the relationship in the mirror is is more important than relationship uh, across the bed. If he doesn't love and honor and, and and value himself, he'll never love and honor and value anyone else, including a, a woman in his life or, or, or man, whatever the preference is. But so he has to get that straight. So in terms of working with guys after the fact or, you know, either after they get free or, or after, you know, a, a marriage breaks, breaks down. I mean, you know, that that's when it's that's kind of when it's really important, because if you're not medicating pain anymore, you got to deal with that pain. If you're not medicating loneliness anymore, you got to deal with that loneliness. And I'll be transparent and honest with you, man. And I. I Just last night, I was having one of those nights, man, where, I, you know, in my past, I would have medicated it. I mean, it was just a feeling of loneliness. It was a feeling of just isolation and just questioning life and future and like where I am. And, you know, just, you know, I just had one of those nights, man, like, man, I'm way out here on a limb at this at this point of life and all that kind of stuff. I'm just being honest, man. I'm just being vulnerable. And, uh, and man, I had one of those nights sitting right here at this table, right in the same spot, man. And. And uh, one of those dark nights of the soul kind of thing. And, you know, if I didn't have the fortitude myself to be and live free, I wouldn't be able to go through and experience that that type of that type of pain or that type of experience without medicating it. But that's 
that's the level of commitment that you have to have to yourself. And so, yeah, in terms of working with guys after the fact, I mean, that's, that's, that's huge. You got to want it for you, man, because, you know, if you don't want it for you, nobody else can want it for you more. Now we talked about uh, how guys usually don't look for the guys to, uh, to talk to, to uh, ask for advice, to uh, go through that grieving process, which is divorce. I believe it's changing, you know, back when I got divorced about 15, almost 20 years ago, um, I went through that process and it was pretty painful. It was pretty lonely. Luckily, I turned to fitness. I started working out quite a bit and I had a pretty good job back then. And that kept me, kept me occupied, kept my mind uh, entertained in the meantime. But still, you, I was still feeling the effects of that because it was a battle. It was not just a It was not just a separation. It was uh, it was going to count combat again. And you're talking about PTSD. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty much also mm -hmm. I think uh, guys probably get the same thing from going through all that, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's their fault or not. So do you see a change now in the male thinking to look out for or, or trying to connect with other guys? Yeah, you know, one of the one of the. You know, Navy SEALs don't even go into battle alone, you know, and kind of one of the things that, that historically, and I guess culturally, at least here in America, that, that men have struggled with is, is being lone wolves and doing things, you know, by ourselves and going through things alone and, and, and that sort of thing. And so that, that's one of the, that's one of the obstacles of our, of our manhood, um, that we have to overcome and that we have to, um, that we have to get past. Um, And so, yeah, quite often we end up living lonely and isolated. And when we go through something like divorce, um, man, there's not much more better times in life when you need companionship, when you need brotherhood in your life, when you need friendship. Women tend to be great at connecting. <laughs> you know, women tend to be great at, you know, getting together and being in touch and getting support from each other and leaning out to each other and, and uh, reaching out to each other and all that kind of stuff. Um, men, not so much. And so, yeah, from a, from a man perspective, I mean, that's something that we have to have. Like we have to, we are wired for relationship. We are, we are better off in every way when we're in relationship. And, you know, I, I think every man needs to have a deep non-sexual relationship with another man. Um, the ability to open up and the ability to be intimate with another man in a non-sexual context. In other words, a guy that, that, you know, that man, you, you are a two a two o'clock in the morning kind of guy. Um, you know, a guy that, that has refrigerator rights in, in terms of I can come over to your house, man, and I can just go in the fridge. I mean, you can come to my house, you can just go in the fridge, but beyond that, your personal fridge. If I see something in your life, man, I have freedom and access to say, you know, hey, Jay-Z, I need to talk to you about something. I, you know, this this thing, man, you know, I I don't know, man. You know, I got your back and I just want to look out for you. So, you know, man, you might want to think about this. You might want to think about that. Or being able to reach out to a guy and say, man, I'm hurting right now. Can you, you know, can we together? Can you, you know, can you lift me up, man? Can we hang out? You know, whatever. Can you pray for me? I don't know. Whatever that thing is between you two. Um, But, you know, to have a guy, at least one guy, probably even more, because sometimes that one guy is busy, um, but at least one guy or even better yet, a circle of guys, you know, that you can live life like that. You know, wolves travel in packs and that's how they kill and that's how they survive. You know, a lone wolf is actually not a survivor. Um, and, you know, if, if we want to be, you know, if we want to be a dog, that's one thing. But if we want to be wolves, then we got to learn how to travel in packs. And so guys. Um, need that connection, man, need that connection big time. And when we're going through crisis, when we're going through separation, when we're going through grief, when we're going through all that kind of stuff, man, when, you know, I, I've, I've been in situations, man, where it was heartbreak and I needed a guy to just, you know, say, come on, man, I got you, you know, let's, you know, bring me a beer or, or go hang out, go for a run or, you know, go up the mountain or something like that. Um, but we gotta have, especially as guys, we gotta have other men, Uh, around us, even if we're married, even if we're in a relationship, we still got to maintain that kind of guy connection. Um, and like I said, women are tend to be great at that, um, generally speaking, but men, not so much. And even when I work with young boys, because I work with teens, um, 
And when I work with teens, you know, that's kind of the, one of the things that, that, you know, that I even instill in them is that man, we can't do this alone. We gotta, we gotta be able to live in a group. We gotta be able to have each other's back in a, in a foxhole kind of thing. Like I said, Navy SEALs don't go into battle alone. Yeah. That's something we, uh, people that have been in the service like yourself and myself, we learned that pretty quickly. Teamwork is the corner story of the, of the, of the training that we get in the service. Mm-hmm. And yet, when we leave the service, we seem to forget that to be able to survive, just like being able, like you said, to be able to survive in combat, you need somebody to be watching your back, that has, has your back, that, you know, that's going to be there when you can uh, look around, it's going to be with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so what kind of tips or how many tips or, or whatever tips you can give my audience, um, or because probably the majority is going to be males, Mm-hmm. On how to move forward uh, in a way, because part of what I wanted to talk to you about was how to move forward uh, once you get to that divorce stage, how mm-hmm. to make it more uh, peaceful, more civil, more amicable. Can mm-hmm. you give us some tips about how to accomplish that? Absolutely. Um, so I've been divorced twice. My first divorce was terrible. I mean, my first divorce was it was horrific, man. It took years and it was ugly and it was I mean, man, I. It was bad, bad. I mean, and it was ugly. And even to this day, um, my relationship with my older two daughters, um, you know, still suffers kind of some of the residual effects of that. My second divorce, man, when people see us together, they have a hard time believing that we're divorced. I mean, we're not like affectionate or, you know, we don't date or nothing like that. But we hang out, we laugh, we joke, you know, we chill. We have no drama at all. We When we got divorced, Um, We didn't even use lawyers. We did it all ourselves. And, you know, we, you know, we figured this out. We divided this and this and blah, blah, blah. We had one or two things that we needed to kind of, you know, one of, one of, you know, that that we needed to resolve. But, but we really didn't have drama. Um, And our kids and and our kids, my oldest two, youngest two, these two are my youngest two. And these two are my oldest two. Um, you know, my younger two kids, they didn't see any of that. They did. There's, and even now, like, you know, my daughter had a, had a birthday thing, you know, that we did at a hotel over the weekend and, you know, all of her friends were there and I was there and, and her mom was there. And, okay. So, so the main, the main tip that I would say is, again, it's difficult to do with one and not the other, but if you can, if you can eliminate as much drama as possible, I mean, if you can have two people that can, and it goes for one side and or the other, the the faster and the, the better you are at letting go of the emotion that happened that ended the relationship. You know, when you go through divorce, you know, there, there, there's again, there's either one thing or a period of time thing that led to somebody saying, you know, I, I, this is over. I think we should get divorced, whatever it is. Um, Whatever that is in the relationship, man, if you can get past the emotion side of it and if you can get to the point of saying, OK, you know, we've decided this, we've come to this conclusion um, and, and and we're not going to, you know, we're, we're not going to take the emotion into the divorce. And ter- now, when you start talking about property and assets and debt and, you know, retirement plans and, you know, parenting time and. And then if somebody's got to now start, you know, writing a check to somebody else every month or whatever, I mean, it can get really personal. The better you are at, at separating all of that as business from all of that, that is emotion, the better off you'll be in terms of divorce. And more importantly, the better off your kids will be. Um, and when, when the focus is, OK, let's let's at least end this well on this for this, you know, for the sake of our kids. Um, then uh then then that's you know that's kind of the that's the best way to go now you know with you know and from a guy perspective you know man if you can get 50 50 parenting time go for it i mean if you can you know i i hate to see when a guy only has his kids you know three or four times a month kind of thing or anything like that or, or less um because he needs to a he needs to still be plugged in with his kids and into their lives and into who they are and their growth and development and all that kind of stuff. He is important. And women should remember that the father is important, whether you think he's important to you or not. (laughs) Um, You know, ladies, he's important to your kids' lives, regardless of how you feel about him. Unless he's an outright danger 
or a threat to the kids, like literally, um, you know, their safety and that kind of stuff. But if it, just because he's a jerk or just because he's an ass doesn't mean he shouldn't be in his kids' lives. And so, you know, but I think as much as possible, kids should, you know, parenting time should be 50-50. And it got, I, my second divorce, man, I, I kind of drew a line. I said, no, I didn't do it in my first divorce. In my second, my second one, I was like, no, I want 50-50 parenting time. And, um, and then my ex actually appreciates it, my second wife, because she gets, you know, time for her. Enough, you know, exactly. She gets to move on. And, you know, we've both moved on to different relationships and different times and all that kind of stuff. Stuff and but she gets to have her life. I mean, now our you know our kids are, are teens and in high school, but you know, so it you know she actually appreciates it now. Um, so in terms of tips, man, I, yeah, I think first and foremost, man, if you can separate the emotion from the business of getting divorced, you'll be better off. And then if you can keep the kids first in terms of priority, you know, not diminishing the importance or significance of the other parent. Um, and uh and keeping them as the ones they're gonna you can't you can't eliminate the fact that they're gonna have negative impacts to their life but you can mitigate that impact you can minimize that impact by at least not letting them be in the middle of all kinds of drama and you may y'all can't even talk and you got to meet in a grocery store parking lot you know and you gotta have you know every every communication documented in email because blah 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 and all this other kind of stuff, man. I mean, really, life is too short for all that, man. Ain't nobody got no time for all that, man. You know, life is too short. If the marriage is over, you know, I mean, I hate to say it. I'm not a proponent of divorce. It, it ter- It's terrible. It sucks. Um, but, man, if it is and if you're at that point, move on and, and without the emotion. When I, I mean, I, over this past weekend, man, I, I hang out with my ex and her, and her, you know, her guy now and you know, we're totally cool. We sit, you know, next to each other at kids games and events and all that kind of stuff, man. So his life is too short, man. Ain't got anybody got no time for all that drama, man. It's just all that. Let's just, let's just move on and, you know, and, and just kind of pick up with the best we can. Yeah. Life is really short and it goes fast. Mm-hmm. So Kirk, if someone wants to uh, talk to you, they want to contact you, what would be the best way to do that? Oh my goodness, man. Pretty easy to find. Um, my website is kirkmsamuels.com, K I R K, like the captain, uh, the letter M and then S A M U E L S, kirkmsamuels.com. Um, I'm Kirk M. Samuels on social media everywhere. Uh, my phone number, my phone number is 720 515 6536. That goes directly to my phone. That's not some phone number in India that, that, <laughs> whatever, that literally rings my phone. So I'm pretty accessible, man. And I love, I love talking with folks. I love helping folks, um, you know, in any kind of way, whether it be teens, whether it be, you know, men, whether it be women, helping, helping women understand or, or, you know, or, or reconciliation or anything like that, man. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, uh, I'm pretty accessible. My book is on Amazon. My book is on my website, all that kind of stuff, man. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. So to my listeners, his links are going to be just below this recording. And Kirk, thank you, sir, for sharing all this really, really valuable information. You know, we we go through a lot of these uh, challenges and a lot of times we don't have this information available to us right away. So we, we feel lost, especially as men. There is a lot of work to be done. So thank you, sir, for being here today. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you big time, JC. We're all here to help. Same team, same dream, man. I appreciate you big time. All right. Until next time, guys, this is JC Soto with Online Media 360. If you need any help with credibility, visibility, or authority positioning, please call to my website, onlinemedia360.com. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.